Um, and here, can, here this slide shows the diagnostic rates. Um, so the number of new infections per 100,000 people every year. Um, so you can see that for every 100,000 black men, there are 163 new infections, which is twice as high as the rate for white men. And then for every 100,000 black women, there are 56 new infections, which is actually 12 times, 12 times as high as the rate for, for white women. So, you know, just building on um, what Dr. Suspide said before, there are major disparities in evident in new infections. Next slide, please. Um, so what, one of the things uh, that's been very clear in all of the, all, all of the work on, on the subject of disparities in new infections is that there are really no differences, no major differences in risk behavior. There really are none. One bright spot is actually that if we look at HIV testing in, uh, in New York City, these are data from the New York City Community Health Survey, which is a telephone survey of about 9,000 um, New York City adults that's conducted every year. You can actually see that testing is higher among blacks than among other um, racial ethnic groups. You can see that over 50% of blacks reported that, non-Hispanic blacks reported that they tested in the past year, and that the proportion who had never tested was lowest for blacks, so only um, one in four had never tested. Um, so you can see testing is somewhat aligned with, with the burden of disease, so this is, a, this is a success. Next slide, please. So I wanted to just talk about the context for HIV prevention and care, and so what are some strategies that we can employ here? And I think you'll hear, hopefully, echoes of what others have said already on the panel. So the context uh, for HIV prevention and care is really our national HIV AIDS strategy, which was released in, in 2010. And this is, it really is a new era for us in working in public health and medical care that we have now this vision, this concise plan for moving the country forward. And it sets very specific targets for reducing new infections, increasing access to care, and uh, there's a little animation here, Specifically, reducing HIV-related could just click with that. <laughs> reducing HIV-related um, health disparities. Um, so the next slide actually details all of these specific targets that were to reach by 2015. And I just wanted to specifically highlight all of the targets for disparities. So for reducing HIV-related disparities. So um, for gay men, gay and bisexual men, for blacks and for, and for Hispanics. Uh, were to increase the proportion with an undetectable viral load by 20% by, by 2015. So this is so these are some pretty serious targets, very aggressive targets for the country. And the national strategy, you know, started was released in 2010. So these are now you know five-year targets, um, which you know all of a sudden 2015 is kind of around the corner. Next slide, please. Um, so how is this translated on the ground? What can we do specifically to, to address disparities in new infections? And one, one great way is using policy, using policy to promote prevention. And this is, you'll definitely hear echoes of what others have said. If we make the offer of HIV testing routine, um, then it can be, which is now law in New York State, it's, it's, it's mandatory in clinical settings to offer, not mandatory to test, but mandatory to offer the HIV test. Um, we can ensure the testing is not just for people who specifically request it, and it can remove that stigma of having to ask for, for a test. Um, we can also use policy to make syringes available for people who, um, who inject drugs. Um, and that's, we have a, a special program in New York State, the Extend, Extend Syringe Access Program. We also know that it's important to address underlying reasons for risk behavior. You know, people are talking about couch surfing, also very important, you know, so instability in, in housing. Also very important are uh, mental health and substance use problems in risk behavior. So we can pr uh, promote having co-location of mental health and substance abuse with uh, places where people seek clinical care, such as uh, HIV testing or STD clinics, for example. Um, and we can also support um, parental acceptance of LGBT youth. There's a lot of research to show that when um, people are rejected by their families, they have greater risk-taking behavior. And I actually wanted to show you, the next slide shows an example of a campaign supported by the Health Department.
department um, by a partner organization in Brooklyn, um, and this was launched this past fall, and these are, this is an image associated with that campaign to promote um, parental acceptance of LGBT youth, specifically in, in communities of color. Um, so next slide, please. So you, um, other, other activities to address disparities in new infections, mobilizing communities for HIV prevention. So this is about forming partnerships, conducting outreach, specifically um, community level interventions can be very important. Um, and then promoting prevention and care through social marketing and media. And I'll show some examples of this coming up. Um, oops, not yet. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and also, we can improve access to um, prevention uh, tools and services, distributing condoms, specific, particularly in high, highly um, impacted communities, and then also um, supporting new, new programs, um, sexual behavioral health programs for uninsured populations. Um, and there are actually some uh, organizations represented here tonight are our, our, our sexual behavioral health program um, sites. Um, those, those programs are specifically focused on um, MSM of color. Um, and then additionally, supporting increased awareness of and access to PEP and PrEP. These are new, brand new prevention strategies that use the same antiretroviral medications that have been so successful for our care now in a prevention context. Next slide, please. So these are just some examples of the social marketing and, and media. Um, the campaign on the left was um, targeted at um, black um, men who have sex with men. It was actually a CDC campaign. There's a little animation here, too. Um, so that was uh, launched in February 2012, but it's continued through 2013. And then the campaign on the right is a, a New York City campaign launched in 2012, run through 2013, um, targeting uh, black and Latina um, women in, in New York City. Next slide, please. And, um, and this is a brand new um, campaign that was just launched on World AC this year, um, targeting um, uh, uh, men who have sex with men who are HIV positive. So really supporting people to get into care, recognizing that it doesn't have to be hard to take care of HIV, which is you know obviously something we've, we've just heard a lot about. Okay, next slide, please. Um, um, so I just wanted to give some examples of oh, 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 okay. <laughs> um, just some examples of I mentioned before community level interventions. These are um, special interventions um, for communities of color around the city, and these use a variety of techniques to really engage communities. And one example are popular opinion leader, also community if you're familiar with community promise, it uses role model stories. So really using um, promoting HIV prevention behavior by really changing um, perceived norms and really trying to reach as many people as possible in any given community. Next slide, please. So then the other main, um, other main strategy, broad strategy, is to address disparities in access to care, access to and, and quality of care. And this can be done by supporting services and policies to promote um, early diagnosis and linkage to care, removing barriers to engagement and retention care, increasing access to and quality of care and treatment, and then coordinating care to, to get the best outcomes. So um, the next slide actually shows the care continuum, and then this is a slide from my colleague um, Grant Harriman, who's here, um, Director of uh, Care Treatment at the Health Department. Um, and oh, on this slide, superimposed, yeah, I'm about I'm almost done. Uh, next, uh, there's a couple of animations here. You can see um, different interventions um, supported by the city um, that are being conducted at organizations all around the city to. Um, uh, support early diagnosis of linkage to care, like outreach in orange, those programs. Um, in yellow, you can see uh, programs that are removing barriers to engagement in care, like mental health, food services, housing, um, programs that uh, increase access to quality of care, like ensuring, oh, there's one more, I think, um, <laughs> ensuring that everyone has access yeah, to um, the, the drugs that they need, antiretroviral therapy, and then also the case management. So just some examples of of really key programs that are helping to support people across the care continuum. So just one more slide here. Just in closing, I wanted to just remind us all that the, the mission of addressing the care continuum for blacks um, in New York City is really central to an overall mission of preventing HIV and caring for all people living with HIV in New York City. Because as you can see from the cascade, what you see here are the, the darker blue bars are the proportion um, of uh, African Americans, and then the rest of the bar is all other race ethnicities. And you can see that almost half of each bar 
is, com is comprised of um, African Americans. So really preventing HIV in the black community and caring for black New Yorkers is completely central to the overall goal of uh, controlling HIV in New York City. So I just in closing wanted to uh, share, remind us all the, the quote from um, President Obama, this is from World Aids Day this year, that the US will remain a global leader in the fight against HIV and AIDS. We will stand with you every step of this journey until we reach the day that we know is possible, when all men and women can protect themselves from infection, the day when all people with HIV will have access to the treatments that extend their lives, the day when there are no babies being born with HIV or AIDS, and when we achieve an AIDS-free generation. So thank you again for the opportunity. So basically what you're looking at right now with this chart is, is you're going to hear some, um, some certain things repeated, but I'm from the school that certain things are worth being repeated. Um, but what is unique to this slide, which is different from other people, is this slide specifically focuses on MSM, MSM that are black, white, and Latino as compared to all persons living with HIV. Um, this slide was specifically given to us from the department, from the New York City Department of Health, Ellen as well, so we'd like to thank Ellen. We reached out to her specifically to have information that would supplement our GMHC's forthcoming report specifically dealing with black, with the dis disproportionate impact of um, black um, MSM, which will be released soon. Um, and what this is, she provided with us individual cascades for each segment of the population. Well, what this chart is, is a compilation of all four slides put together for you to provide a snapshot. Um, and when you immediately when you look at this slide, what you will see is black Y MSM, when compared to their racial ethnic uh, MSM peers, have less percentages in every single category. Um, and, and, this, and the causes of this as explored by book that is explored in GMHC's forthcoming report titled um, Breaking the Silence, a call to end disproportionate impact within black clients and white MSM community is the greater health disparities and the social economic um, inequalities as well as the heightened family, cultural, and religious and institutional stigmatization and discrimination faced by black white MSM. 